Welcome to the MPL Goal Show, the show where we bring you all the action from across the Northern Premier League. We start at Baysford United, who played out a seven goal thriller with Whitby Town. The opener came from a corner, Seaside's top scorer Stephen Walker heading home his 11th of the season inside three minutes. There's been no stopping Walker of late, and he helped himself to another before half time. If Walker's second was good, the response from Baseford was even better. Ashley Chambers rifling the ball into the top right corner. That wasn't the end of the first half action as Jordan Hallam drew his side level from the penalty spot. Whitby came into the weekend with just two wins since the start of September, but found themselves back ahead 25 minutes from time. Nathan Thomas heading home from close range. However, Baseford responded again from a set piece, Hallam producing some free kick magic to make it 3 all. There'll be one final twist, however, and another exquisite finish from Walker as he sealed his hat trick five minutes from time. 4 3 it finished to the Seasiders, who climbed to 13th. On to Gainsborough Trinity, who were hoping to bring their recent FA Cup heroics into the league. Workington were the visitors, and it took less than half an hour for the deadlock to be broken. Dylan Coggill curling a shot into the far corner. In the final 20 minutes, they doubled their advantage through Jordan Halliwell. And in the dying minutes, Fraser Preston made it three points and three goals for the Holy Blues, who rise to 17th. Yeah! Next, Hepburn Town welcomed Prescott Cables to the North East, in a game between two of last season's promoted sides. The first half saw two red cards for the visitors, and two missed penalties for the home side, who were looking to keep pace at the top of the division. Finally the deadlock was broken on 66 minutes, Amar Pure while on target from close range. It took until the 93rd minute for the Hornets to make sure of the points, and another header, this time from Jack Donaghy. On to Hyde United, who hosted a Wurzok town side that came into the weekend second in the table, but on a three game losing run. It was the home side who struck first inside four minutes through Ewan Banj. Then perhaps the goal of the round with an hour gone. To make sure of the points as well, take a bow, Callum Spooner. If you wanted goals, the Giant Axe was the place to be on Saturday. Seven of them shared between Lancaster City and Ilkston Town. The visitors opened the scoring inside a minute, and who else but Tom Kersons for his 17th goal of the season. Less than three minutes later, Lancaster were back on level terms. Aaron Bennett, the scorer. Yeah! A remarkable opening six minutes saw a third goal scored. Lewis Mansell completing a quick turnaround for the home side. That was just the start of the drama as George Wilkinson levelled up midway through the first half. Then six minutes before half time, he helped himself to another. 3 2 to Ilkston headed into the break. Or well, so the visitors thought. Aaron Bennett had other ideas, rifling home his second in first half stoppage time. Bennett was a man on a mission on Saturday, turning defenders inside and out before completing his hat trick. That would be the final goal of the afternoon for the Dolly Blues, who held on for an important three points. The goals continued to flow across the division, including at Harrison Park where League Town hosted FC United of Manchester. Owen Windsor scored the first inside nine minutes for the home side. But less than ten minutes later, the visitors were back on level turns from the penalty spot. Paul Ennis to score it.
Before the half hour, the final goal went the way of Jess Sittol. His first for the club since arriving from Warrington Town, and enough for an important three points for the Reds. Next up, league leaders Macclesfield welcome Morpeth Town to the Leasing.com Stadium, with commentary coming from the home side. Edmondson, no space for him, so he goes back to Whitehead. Whitehead looking for the one-two with Elliot. Back to Elliot from Duffy now. Elliot trying to turn and get it onto his left foot for the shot. He can't, but he does find Whitehead. Whitehead now with a left-footed shot blocked. Back to Elliot, and Elliot scores. We travel to the Proctor Car Stadium, where five goals were shared between Matlock Town and Bamber Bridge. The visitors struck first, Mark Cullen lashing home on the rebound. The Gladiators' response was quick, Ramey Campbell drawing his side back on level terms. There were more goals to come in the first half. Chris Churchman's long-range strike wrong footing replacement goalkeeper Miles Wright, who was introduced 10 minutes earlier after Rogan Ravenhill sending off. But the Gladiators showed they were made of stern stuff in the second half, Josh Granite drawing them level. Then up stepped Montel Gibson, who volleyed 10-man Matlock to all three points. They remain in the bottom four, but only on goal difference. Next, Stockton Town hosted Ashton United as they went in search of a sixth straight league win. It started well for the hosts, Glenn Butterworth opening the score in two minutes after half time. But Ashton find themselves on the fringes of the playoffs for a reason, and they drew level on 73 minutes thanks to Darius Asai. Less than 60 seconds later, turnaround complete. James Hardy condemning the anchors to their first league defeat since mid-September. Our final action of the round comes from Warrington Rylands, as Michael Connor took charge of Blythe Spartans for the first time. His side found themselves behind shortly before half-time. Ben Hardcastle with the goal. Eight minutes after the break, Blythe drew level, Billy Gordon trying his luck from distance and finding the bottom corner. But a penalty would be what settled the teams at the Hive Arena, Hardcastle scoring his second of the afternoon. 2-1 it finished to Warrington Ryland. <laughs> 